Ah, uh, yes, the superhero landing. Don't recommend trying it in real life, but it's shockingly simple to do inside of Blender. Hey, I'm Ken and Profit, and in this CG Cookie tutorial, we're gonna take a look at a rather simple hero landing effect and what tools Blender has to pull this off. So for this, you're gonna need two clips. One is just a shot of your actor jumping as high as they possibly can and then landing in the coolest way they know how to land. And then of course, you'll wanna grab a clean plate in the exact same location with that camera locked off. I'm gonna take advantage of the VFX tab in Blender. I'm right in the masking section. I'm gonna load in my clip. This is just me trying to jump and look awesome. Don't really know if I'm succeeding, but hey, it's something. And I'm gonna find a frame where I'm completely suspended in the air right before I make contact with the ground. And I'm gonna just mask out this frame by creating a new mask. I'll name it Roto Jump. And I can change the handle type by pressing V. I like to use the aligned single. And I do actually have a full video on rotoscoping on the CG Cookie channel. You can check that out. It gives a more in-depth look at rotoscoping. But for this, we're actually just going to mask out one frame because that's really all we need for this effect. So I'm going to quickly draw a mask. And this is actually going to be blurred to Kingdom Come. So you don't need to be as careful as I'm being here. Option C to close that mask. And we can view this mask by coming up here to the mask display check overlay and view combined to check that out. And you can see there's a little extra area there. We're gonna to wanna to remove that. So let me create an additional mask. I'll just name this delete and knock out that area really quickly so that we can remove that once we jump into our compositor. All right, let's jump into the compositor. And we're actually not gonna to spend too much time in the compositing section. I am just gonna load in a set alpha node. I've got my video footage already plugged into that and then I'm gonna drop in a mask node and just grab that roto that we made, plug it into the alpha, and you can see there we have our uh, pretty clean mat there. It works, but of course, let's duplicate that mask node, select that delete, and we want to actually subtract that little guy from the other mat so that uh, that section that we need removed gets removed. We can do that with a math node, set that math node to subtract, and boom, there we go. Nice clean mat and a pretty good masked out image that we can use to animate. So I'm just gonna save that out. We can actually do that right inside the viewer nodes and make sure you save it as a PNG. And for the remainder of the tutorial, we're actually gonna be using the video sequence editor. So I'm gonna press Shift A inside the video sequence editor and we can just actually jump straight away to clip because we already loaded it into the masking section. It should show up right there for us. I'm going to go to the frame right before I make contact with the ground just hit K for knife tool, and that allows us to cut that track. And then I'm gonna press Shift A and add in our clean plate footage. If you press Shift S, you can actually snap a timeline to a desired frame. So I'm just gonna type in frame one and snap that clip to frame one. K to knife that and slide it down. I'm just pressing G and then Control to snap it. And so now we have our clean plate footage synced up with our jumping and landing footage. You probably know where we're going with this. I'm gonna add in that PNG image and I'll just trim that to my desired length. And it looks like I've got an extra frame here. So I'm gonna press K, knife that over, do a little bit of housekeeping there. And so now we should have this still image right over top of our clean plate that we can actually animate to be the flying in part of this effect. Now, if you select that PNG and come over here to transform, you actually see this mirror option. What you're gonna to wanna to do is just click this, actually click it several times so you can kinda of get like a, yeah. Okay, yeah, we don't need that at all. So uncheck that. We're actually gonna use that offset button and then we, we, we can animate this left, right, up and down because we have that clean plate and we got that PNG masked out for us. So I'm actually just going to raise it up, raise the roof. I'm gonna check a keyframe there and then jump to the end of my little a PNG clip and then just set that back down to zero. And actually I want that gap to be a little bit bigger before I make contact, so I'll slide that up and then set a keyframe there. And you can see we're gonna need to adjust this. So I'm gonna change this file browser to a graph editor. Under key, make sure the interpolation mode is set to linear so that there's no uh, easing in and easing out going on. And then I can actually just grab this over and adjust the timing right there in real time, similar to you would any other animation. And we can just figure out how many frames we want that jump to be on screen. 
you really want about three or four, nothing more than that, or the speed will be too slow. So that's all to taste. And now what I'm gonna do is grab our contact clip. With it selected, press Shift A and add in a transform node. And I'm gonna just set a keyframe on the position X and Y. And this is gonna allow us to add some camera shake to that entire clip. And this is very important for that effect. So I'm gonna grab these two channels. And then if I press N to bring up the sidebar, we can add modifier and add a noise modifier. And this is just going to add some noise to the transform values of that video clip. The lower the scale value, the more noisy your footage will be because that wavelength gets more compressed. So now we have some uh, camera shake over top of our footage. We'll come back to that in a little bit, but for now, I wanna do a little bit of speed ramping as I make the landing here. So I'm gonna press Shift A, add in a speed control, and this will allow us to adjust the speed of parts of our clip. So you wanna come over here to the effects strip, uncheck the stretch to, and then you wanna use as speed, set the speed vector to one, and you can see that just allows our clip to be the exact same speed it was, but now we can actually animate that speed factor value to ramp up. Because as I make a landing, it's kind of anticlimactic, I slow down a little bit, and that's not very realistic. There'd still be a lot of speed and force going on there. So I'm gonna set a key right about here, crank that up to a value of two, so that as I make that landing, I'm going faster, and then as I kind of start to stand up here, I'll put it back down to uh, real-time speed so that it makes a little more sense with like an actual landing. So I'll set this speed factor down to one, set a keyframe there, and you can see in our graph editor, we can actually make this curve be a nice ease in and ease out. So I wanted to start with a fairly steep curve and then slowly ease back down to one. So that the start of my footage is really fast as I make that landing and then it eases back down to one. All right, cool. Now that that's done, let's go back to this transform node where we had our camera shake. And we wanna make sure that this camera shake only affects the areas right as I make that landing. You can see there's this restrict frame range option. We can actually start that frame right about here where I make contact. And then you can actually extend using the end value, extend it out, and then using that out value, you can sort of do a fade so that the effect will start strong on your desired frame and then slowly fade out. That's pretty much exactly what we want for this camera shake. And you can do as much or as little as you want. That allows us to have the camera shaking when I first make contact with the ground and then kind of slowly ease back into a stable shot. Alrighty, we're pretty much done, but there was a problem with our PNG. It's way too crystal clear. So let's just throw in a blur node. Not a node, I guess it's a adjustment layer or an effect strip it's called. I'm used to calling things nodes. So let's add in a Gaussian blur effect strip. I'm just gonna blur the Y, blur the X a little bit, but then blur the Y because that's the up and down value. And then if we set that blending composite mode to alpha over, you can see now that that uh, clip is now blurred and that just kind of fakes some motion blur so that as we hit play there, it looks a lot more realistic with fast motion jumping and landing complete with the camera shake and everything. So now your last step is gonna be to just grab your timeline here, add an adjustment layer, set it to the length of your timeline, and you can kinda do some color correction or some contrast, hue saturation, whatever you want. There's all these modifiers right over here. Once you have that adjustment layer in, you can make those changes to your shot. And it's actually pretty powerful, the, the tools that the VSC does have. So that's it for this video, guys. I hope you were able to learn something and see how all these tools inside of Blender, using the masking, the compositor, and the video sequence editor can all be combined together to create a really cool effect very simply. This has been Ken and Profit for CG Cookie. Thanks for watching.